Well, hello, darlings. It's me, Brie Vire, mistress of the pops. You know, the sassy lassie with the classy chassis. This week, we will be tuning into Pop Stop's Halloween Spooktacular. Ooh, sounds scary. Hope nothing pops out. This is going to be a really nice set. Roll the film. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to the Pop Stop Halloween Spooktacular. I'm your host, Count Joey, and this is my co-host, The Bride Up. Hey, guys. Hey, wait a minute. I thought we were all supposed to dress like Universal Monsters. Okay, well, the mummy said that this was better. Oh, way better. Digby, that better not be our good toilet paper. Whoa. In the spirit of Halloween, we are reviewing the Gemini exclusive four pack of the Universal Monsters Silver Screen Limited Edition, which includes Frankenstein, Dracula, the Creature, and the Wolfman. So, the Universal Monsters was a series of horror, suspense, and sci fi films that was created by Universal Studios and ranged from 1923 to 1960. This particular set is a Gemini exclusive, it includes four black and white variants of the original monsters and it is available on the Gemini website or at least the last time we checked it was available. It's going to run you about $50. There is a very neat metallic version of this exact set that is also a Gemini's exclusive on their website. It's going to run you about $150. So it's a little too rich for my blood. Yeah. Ah. All right, let's take a look at the box. Um, you can see all the pops with their artwork at the bottom. At the top it says Funko Pop Universal Monsters in a bright red. On the top of the box you can see that it has all the art of their heads with their names on it and it says Silver Screen Limited Edition. On the side of the box you can see all the uh, full body artwork of all four pops. Uh, on the other side of the box you have this neat little tombstone, tombstone that says Funko Monsters with the creepy castle in the back and the back of the box you can see it has the same uh, head art and the names. All right, let's check out our first monster, which is Frankenstein, or Frankenstein's monster. It's alive, it's alive, it's alive. All right, guys, let's do this. Oh, thank God. This guy seems a little stiff. Who invited him to the party? All right, guys, here we have Frankenstein, Pop Movies Universal Monsters. This variant is based on the regular Frankenstein, which is Pop Movies number 112. The movie Frankenstein came out in 1931 and is centered on Dr. Frankenstein who creates a monster using various exhumed body parts. Frankenstein's monster is played by Boris Karloff. Fun fact, the monster in this film was created by makeup artist Jack P. Pierce and did not physically resemble the monster from Mary Shelley's novel. Brevira, tell me about this pop. Okay, so for starters, this guy is just a repaint of the original Frankenstein pop. However, he is a really cool looking repaint. I'm really a fan of the whole grayscale black and white, especially on these guys who you originally saw in grayscale and black and white. Um, so he has a ton of detail on his sculpt. I mean, his hair, they did a fantastic job even like kind of getting this like little calic and all the lines, the rough edges of the back of his hair, as well as this kind of straight across but jagged forehead look. They got a ton of little tiny details, like the little stitchings on his face, this big scar, which actually kind of has like this translucence to it. It looks really creepy and really cool um, up front. They got the little clip that holds his scalp on, and of course the neck bolts, because you cannot have Frankenstein without these neck bolts. Now his actual head skull is very boxy which is cool I mean obviously you think of Frankenstein with this big like block head they did actually sculpt out the supercillary arch or the brow bone um, to give it that very like Frankenstein look now his actual suit is more simple but Frankenstein's suit is more simple um, you know it's just kind of like a gray suit they did get a lot of detail in the actual like creases of the back of it and kind of the little um, arms and everything to make it look like clothing 
Um, the cool thing about this guy and the whole collection in general is they all do have their arms out. However, each one is slightly different, and we'll get into that as we um, kind of go down the line. So overall, he looks just like the character. He looks really, really cool. But let's move on to another pop that really sucks, but in a good way. Yes, I'm talking about Dracula. I'd let him bite me. All right, guys, here we have Dracula, Pop Movies, Universal Monsters. This variant is based on the regular Dracula, which is Pop Movies number 111. The movie Dracula came out in 1931 and was loosely based on Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula. Dracula is played by Bela Lugosi. Fun fact, when Bela Lugosi died in 1956, he was buried in his actual black Dracula cape. Well that's the full 360, back to you guys. Let's take a look at Dracula. Okay, so this guy, he's another one that has a whole lot of really neat details. Um, sculpted in him. Obviously, for starters, you know, he has this really cool and defined cape. It has just a really cool shape to it, and it's just that classic, iconic Dracula look. Um, you know, of course, for starters, he does have this slicked back widow's peak. He does have the very arched eyebrows. Now, one thing that I think is super, super cool about this pop, and it's a little bit like that on Frankenstein, I forgot to point it out, but they use matte black gloss black and silver to really pop out the details. Now his hair and his eyebrows and his eyes are very glossy black. And of course, when you think of like Bela Lugosi and like the old school Dracula, you think of the hair just very like slicked back and jet, jet, jet black. So of course he's got his very classic, classy ensemble that we're used to seeing him wear with, you know, the vest and the shirt and the jacket on top. You can even see his little cuffs of his shirt popping out of his um out of his jacket which is really neat um he does have his little medallion as well as the little chain on his pocket watch and of course he does have the fangs out and cute little smile i mean he is really really cute and actually out of the colored ones the original ones this guy is my favorite so obviously i love the black and white version um so he does also have his hands out and like i said about frankenstein they all have their hands out but the little tiny details just gives them that personality let's check out the creature from the black lagoon all right guys here we have creature pop movies universal monsters this variant is based on the regular creature which is pop movies number 116. The movie Creature from the Black Lagoon came out in 1954. Gilman, which is actually the creature, is played by Ben Chapman on land and Riku Browning underwater. Fun fact, Riku Browning, who was a professional diver and swimmer, was required to hold his breath for up to four minutes at a time while filming the underwater scenes. Huh. Beat that, David Blaine. This one's a catch and release. I think I'd throw him right back. Let's take a look at the creature from the Black Lagoon. You done? Yes. Okay, so this guy just has an insane amount of sculpted detail on him. I mean, this whole thing, everything just has so much texture. Not only is it textured with the lines this way, but the actual like way that it's cut and shaped. I mean, he's just, he's got so, so much detail. His face sculpt is just ridiculous as well. I mean, he has all these lines. He has all these kind of like, you know, the arch and the brow bone, the nose, the cheeks. I mean, everything. He's just packed full of details. Um, so obviously his body is packed full of detail too. I mean, he's got all this kind of scaling armor look. I mean, he's got the detail hanging off of his forearm, even the webs in between his little fingers with the sharp little claws, the webbing in his toes, you know, just every single little thing that they have on him. He actually kind of almost has like an airbrushed look, like you can kind of see the little dark hints there and the kind of dark hints here and then, you know, the lighter chest plate here. I feel like they really did a good job incorporating that um, with using grayscale. Now, just like these characters, he does have his arms out. However, his arms are not as far up. They're kind of just out like that. Question, do you think they made this pop in 3D because the movie came out in 3D? Uh, answer, I think they made every pop in 3D, so he's also in 3D. I learned something today. Well, actually, guys, It was worse than I thought! Seriously, you guys? Alright guys, here we have Wolfman, Pop Movies Universal Monsters. 
This variant is based on the regular Wolfman, which is Pop Movies number 114. The movie Wolfman came out in 1941 and is centered on a man who was bitten by a werewolf. The Wolfman is played by Lon Chaney Jr. Fun fact, throughout the movie, the character is never once referred to as the Wolfman. Look at this hairball. Hello, it's called waxing? Well, that is a full 360. Back to you, guys. All right, Beer Fire, tell me about this hairball that I control. <laughs> so this pop is super, super cute. Um, Much like the other pops, he does have a whole lot of detail, you know. They did kind of on the hair. I mean, it's just kind of little lines edged out, but it makes it look like hair. You know, they did a really good job. Even on the side, you can actually see where it actually kind of separates from his hair hair and his face hair there's like kind of a little defining line right there um you know of course it has his cute little pointed ears that make him look wolf-like they did a lot of sculpting in the actual head you know much much like the other pops he's got the pronounced the superciliary arches or brow bones he does kind of have this like slight wolf or dog looking face um you can even kind of see like there's looks like a shih tzu he does look like a shih tzu there's even little wrinkles um above his nose and then he's got the cute little nose and of course the underbite because you can't have the wolf man without the underbite um they did you know detail the hairy parts like his feet and his hands have you know the whole like lined details and of course he's in kind of that classic um button-up shirt and pants that we're used to seeing on him but the pants even have the little tiny like tattered edges where he's like obviously busted out of his pants because he's transformed into the wolf um i mean overall you know he's super super cute and of course like the other props he does have his arms up however he has his hands actually like tilted upwards like we're used to seeing yeah in the actual like wolf man you know he has a more upright so like i said i mean it's cool that they all have their hands up like that but they're each just slightly different kind of to the characters themselves um overall you know he's just he's really really cool looking and honestly i don't know if i like him better or the flocked one better because i really really want the flocked one as well i don't know you know what would be cool is if they had a black and white flocked wolfman now i absolutely love this set they look excellent they have really nice paint jobs and the packaging is just really cool for display. I actually love the fact that this set is so cohesive. Whether they're in the box or out of the box, they obviously belong together and they look really, really good. Each one does their character justice. Like you were saying, it's awesome that they actually came in black and white. Um, plus, one of my favorite things is they double as a Halloween decoration. Ooh. Uh, well, that pretty much wraps up our review on the four pack of the Universal Monsters. I would like to know which one is your favorite out of this set, or if you have a favorite monster that you want us to review, let us know. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can like us on Facebook. Also, right now we are running a giveaway, so go ahead and check out that 2,000 subscriber giveaway contest. It's horror themed as well. Ah. Um, all those links will be down below. Well, that's it for now. Keep it pupping, people! <laughs>